All right, guys, this is episode number three in my new series, What Makes Particular Fighters So Darn Good. We have covered Canelo. We have covered McGregor. Now we're going to be covering Bacal. What I really want to focus on is not just what makes them so good. I mean, people have talked about that before. We want to talk about why they're so good in the training tips that you can utilize to be more like them. If you're excited about this series, guys, give the video a like. Get subscribed if you haven't already. I believe my next video in this series is going to be on Israel Adesanya. It's been requested so many times. If you don't want to miss that, just make sure you hit the bell notification and boom, when it comes out, you will know. Now, moving back to Bacau, before we get too into this, I want you guys to note one thing. There are so many things that Bacau is really good at. I'm not saying these are the things, these are the five things he is 100% best at. I'm saying these are things that I have noticed, which we can work on today. And you don't necessarily need a bag or a training partner. You can just think about these and actually drill them at home. That's what's going to work best right now. That's what a lot of us have access to. We don't all have partners that we can work with at the moment. So just keep in mind, it's not the five best things Bacau does. It's five things that make him very, very good. And of course, when we're talking about Bacau, we have to talk about his switch kick, his lead leg roundhouse kick. What makes him so exceptional? Well, I have noted years ago why he is so good at this. I've tried to utilize it myself. Look at how quick he gets that lead kick away. Not to the same effect that he has, but what I've noticed with Bacau is most people when they do a switch, their feet, if you look at their feet, one leg will come all the way back and one will come in front. And it's almost an entire stance switch. And I know why people do that. They switch their feet so that they can get maximum power pushing off that back leg now. The lead leg becomes the back leg and all of a sudden you're going, okay, I have that whole hip leverage. But you sacrifice speed when you do this. And when you note Bacow kicking, it is so fast. So what I've seen him do time and time again is he shortens up his switch kick dramatically. It's all about the footwork. Instead of doing that big jump switch where his feet go one, two, his lead leg just pumps back. That's it. He's in a stance. He's up there. He's rocking away. Boom. Boom. It's so quick. And the reasoning is he doesn't have one leg come all the way behind the other one. And then the leg that was the back one comes in front. He actually just pops his lead leg back and gets into the kick so quick, so fast. And because of that, it's very, very hard to time. It's very hard to see it coming. And he's able very often when somebody attacks with hands to get right into that kick. Everything else about his technique is obviously fairly flawless, but really what we're looking at is just his ability to get that switch kick off so darn fast. Just boom. So you guys can practice this at home. It's very simple. Instead of setting up your stance and working, oh, I'm gonna focus on the kick all the time, just focus on the speed of the switch, the transition between the feet. So instead of going here where I'm kind of at this pace, one, two, one, two, I'm just gonna go really quick. That's it. And I can pump my leg up if I want after. And it's just noting the detail behind the footing and the position of the feet when they land. It's back and straight up. And he has executed this so many times against so many fighters and it must be so difficult for them because that kick comes almost as fast as a jab. But if you haven't noted why, that is 100% it. It is just the speed that he does his transition and the fact that one leg, his lead leg, only comes back just a tiny, tiny bit behind what was the back leg. The back leg does very little movement. And when he does this, something that's very interesting is a lot of times when people do switches, they move forward. Their body weight transitions forward. But for him, his body weight stays in one spot. He controls the distance with the jab, keeps him right there, and then whoop, and his body is at the same placement. So he doesn't ever have to worry about moving in too far and getting punched with counters. All right, next I wanna cover Bukau's lead leg front kick. And you're gonna probably note throughout this that a lot of what we talk about is all his legs. I'm not saying he has bad hands, it's just what makes him exceptional is pretty much below the chest. Now, for his front kick, we're looking at two factors. Factor number one is his distance. Where most people throw a jab and they land the front kick, they can do that very well. Bokao can be way back here. He's way back here, he's out of punch range, but he's still extending his shoulders and his chest very far to let people know that they're almost within range, but they're not really. And then from there, where most people would be maxed out and not landing the front kick, he still pushes through. Now, how does he do this? Well, the big thing that you'll note with Bokao is it's very rare for him to stay 100% upright. He utilizes his hips exceptionally well. So instead of his hips staying square when he kicks, he pumps his hips forward. And that's gonna give him extra range. 
Now the additional thing that he does is if we imagine this is somebody's belt line and their belly button is right up here. If I, this is my belly button. If I get hit from the belly button up on a front kick right up here, generally it's gonna force me back or if it doesn't force me back, I can stand my ground, take the impact and counter back. But if this is the belly button level and this is the belt line level, Bacow very often will kick slightly below the belt line level. Why does he do this? Well, first of all, there's no rule about hitting below the belt line level. You can touch it. You obviously can't hit down at the grind, but the lower abdomen is definitely a legit target. So instead of him coming up here and extending out at that distance, he comes down. It makes it much, much easier for the kick to land because blocking that low kick way down there to scoop, you have to go extra low. To catch, you have to drop extra low. And that all takes a little bit more time. So when you throw your front kicks, don't always think, oh, I have to touch up my belt line, my belt line, my belt line, sometimes down low, down low. And you're gonna probably get a little bit more length out of that too. Now, when you get hit here instead of here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna collapse you. And you saw this time and time again when he fought Nicky Holtzkin, he would kick him in the lower stomach and Nicky would end up, huh, like this. How do you counter from here? There's no counter. So when you guys are utilizing your front kick, you're tapping away, your front arm is controlling the range. And then when you kick, pump the hips forward and aim low. So how do we drill this? Hands come up, we practice maintaining our range with the jab. We go, uh oh, okay, we can't touch there. We pump our hips further forward. We aim a little bit lower. And then from there, we're able to make contact where normally we wouldn't be able to. Find something to touch. It could be the chair. It could be even the wall. You get yourself at that point where you're going, okay, I feel like I'm really stretched out there. I'm almost maxed out. And then from there, you just go, hoop, hoop, and you're just touching nice and low and extending that hip outwards. Next guys, I wanna talk about Bacow's long guard and how it stops him from taking clean shots. The long guard, if you are unfamiliar with it, is not when our hands are here, but when both arms stretch out. Now imagine you're trying to throw punches towards me and I have both hands out like this. It makes it very difficult for front, for straight punches to come, very difficult for the hooks to land. The only thing that can land quite easy with this guard or this defense is the uppercut. And I've mentioned that time and time again, that when you're fighting a Thai stylist, an uppercut is something to focus on. Masato did it great against Bacau. You guys can check out the breakdown here. But the big issue with landing an uppercut when the long guard is being executed is you can't throw it like this. You've got to get a lot of range out of it. And not a lot of people throw an uppercut with a lot of range. So when Bacau does his defense, doesn't matter whether he comes up onto one foot or whether he stands his ground he'll either go two hands out long guard or he'll keep one hand out and the other one protecting the forehead and you've seen him do it so many times somebody comes forward they start punching at him maybe he went one two he utilized that front kick we just talked about or maybe that quick switch kick which we talked about somebody closes the distance and he just moves backwards and uses that nice long guard. And he is very, very successful with this. It's not something that everybody should just try doing right away. Definitely drill it, try it at home, play around with in your shadow boxing, you know, you're, you're throwing your shots, you're doing whatever you normally are. And then you imagine, uh oh, somebody's coming, long guard. I'm working away, getting my timing down, working my kicks, long guard. Two hand long guard, one hand long guard. If I want, I can use my back arm long guard from there. If this guard is 100% brand new to you and you wanna start off slow, think, extend one arm out. It's almost like the palm is coming directly out as a strike. The other arm turns outwards as well. So I have two palms facing out. I go one side and then the other side. Why do I go like this? Well, if I had a glove on and I turn my arm this way, the cushion of the glove is connecting to my head. It's much more padded. It's much nicer. This direction, when I come up, it feels kind of awkward on the shoulder and I don't want these ropes and the hard part of the glove connecting to my head. This is much easier. So you can start off and you just work one arm, long guard, other side, long guard, double arm, long guard. You can start adding a check in if you want. One, two, three, one, two, three, I generally do not use a double arm long guard with a check. I feel like there's too much weight pulling me forward. I prefer one leg up, one arm out, and one arm to the head. Bacow's long guard is 
on point. Now, if you wanted to get better at it, obviously you could use it in sparring. Obviously you could get some drilling done with it, but just starting to utilize it in shadow boxing, starting to practice it and get that repetitive motion down, that will be the first step to really being able to use this effectively. Now the long guard leads us perfectly into our next point, which is Bokao's knee entry. When he is going to throw a knee on somebody, he uses that long guard to distract their hands to go up high because they see arms coming at them. And then when their arms come up, he throws the knee. So let's talk about that quickly. When Bacow is trying to close the distance on knees and he's trying to get to somebody's stomach, if he just from here, let's say we're doing a step through, we'll go through two options here. Number one, he steps through and he goes to throw the knee. If he does this at any point during that, if somebody throws a punch at him, he has to make sure that he's protecting his head, probably with the arms crossing the face. But the way he does it is he will go right, right out here. He'll be at that punch range, that punch range, maybe he'll snap out a kick, he'll snap out his front kick, and then right from there, his arms go out, he's not contacting them yet, he walks forward, and then he throws the knee. He gets his head back out of the way, the arms stay up. So if at any point during that, the guy throws at him, the hands are up. He also utilizes the switch knee, and we already talked about how quick his switch is. So if somebody's coming towards him in that punch range, he goes, okay, I don't like this right now. Right away, he puts both hands out, he switches at the same time, and then drives the knee in, and then right away, they get scared, and he backs off, or he closes the gap completely by clenching them up. So again, same thing. If you want to practice this by yourself, you just go little steps, and you practice doing your little stance switch, your arms pump straight out into that double arm long guard, pump, and then from there, knee, and maintain the long guard until you're safely out of range. Again, I'm standing my ground, I'm touching, I'm touching, I'm touching, I do my switch, and my long knee, arms stay out. Always being aware that the uppercut is the danger. If I see the uppercut coming, maybe I'll lean back. That'll keep me safe. He's done that a number of times. I'm jabbing, I'm jabbing, switch, boom. Switch, boom, hands back up, throws a kick or two, maybe a couple hands, switch, knee. His knee entry is unlike many other people and he's able to utilize it so effectively because he's not getting countered. Whereas a lot of people when they throw knees, they run the risk of eating a big punch on the way in. And finally guys, the last thing that I really wanna talk about, and it kind of pieces everything together, is the ability that he has to control the distance. Now there are some fighters like Masato who have made it very difficult for him to control the distance. That's the sign of a really high level fighter. They can take Bokao out of his comfort zone. But for Bokao, let's say I'm against the wall here. He is very good that we've talked about at being this length where nobody can touch him. He can touch them, he can keep them at bay with that long jab, which isn't actually making contact, but it opens up the opportunities for the other techniques. And then he utilizes his distance control because he's at this long range. If somebody comes to rush him, he leans back and he fires that lead leg round kick, which he does so effectively. For his defensive round kick, he comes up generally with the shin crossing over the body so the person can't enter. And he just utilizes all of this so well that he maintains the range. They're just outside of jab range, he pushes in, he taps them, he throws the front kick. He gets to this range here where they think, okay, I'm safe. He does the double arm guard, he hits them, they run in, he jams them. He gets back to this range here, he lands his round kick. He's constantly utilizing this lead leg to control the range. Front kicks are extremely long. The round kicks are a tiny bit shorter, but they're so effective. If somebody decides to rush, he again can use that left leg to jam them. If they get too close or he's at that punch range, he can get the skip off and throw that lead leg knee. His ability to control the distance with one limb is so amazing. And I'm not saying that his right leg or his hands are not playing an element in this distance control, but it's really the left leg which really just blows me away. If you guys are looking to learn how to control distance like Bacal, very simple, get on a bag, get with a partner, practice on your own right now, it's fine. And you just work here, you imagine, okay, they're just outside of my jab range. That's perfect time for me to skip and kick back to jab range. They're staying there. All right, touch them in the stomach, touch them low, make it hurt, touch them in the stomach. Oh, they run towards me, jam them up with that nice cross round kick. Oh, okay, now they're letting me touch them. I'm touching them, skip knee, back it off with that long guard. And then right away again, back to controlling that distance. And then I'm front kicking and I'm round kicking. And he's all over people 
with that one limb and everything else that we talked about utilizing such amazing distance control. Guys, like I said, there are so many things that Macau is so good at. I just wanted to focus on five things that I have noted personally, which a lot of other people can't do like him. Is that all he's good at? No, absolutely not. I didn't get into his ability to throw, to clench, the body shots he throws, the sweeps. There's so much that we could go through, but for today, those are the five things that I want to focus on and I want you guys to start working on if you want to be more like Bokao. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, you got some knowledge from it, make sure you give it a like. Get subscribed if you haven't. Throw in the comments down below who you'd like to see me break down next. Sharing the video is always super appreciated. I can't tell you how much that would mean to me. Guys, nice work today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until you make it back here next time, train hard and I'll see you back here soon for another episode.